Two things we're going to cover today in this review of a one-third scale, the Batman statue from Blitzway and Prime One Studio. First, we're going to cover the fact that Pattinson, Robert Pattinson, that's right, the weirdo from Twilight was going to be the next Batman and everybody lost their shit. And if you're a follower of mine for a long time, you know I said guys, gals, trees, and plants, and other. Calm down. Brokeback Mountain was going to be our next Joker, and everybody lost their shit, and he ended up being the best on-screen Joker we've ever seen. That's number one. Number two, this statue, you literally had to dress it up, and it has so many different accessories, I swear to God, it's a doll. Hey, my name is Mr. X. Welcome to the Extreme Channel. We are giving away $1,000 statues to you guys. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. We're going to review Robert Pattinson as Batman in the statue form. It was a collaboration between Prime One Studio and Blitzway. This is one-third scale. Now before we do that, I want to touch on what I thought of the movie The Batman and Robert Pattinson. I loved it. Honestly, I think he is the best Batman, and that was the best Batman movie, and let me explain why. So first of all, while I wasn't a huge fan of his portrayal as Bruce Wayne, it actually fits. He's kind of this disenfranchised orphan that doesn't want to deal with society, plus he spends his night beating criminals to a pulp. I love that it was like a true detective Batman. In the whole movie, I almost felt like, you know what, this could really happen. Every other Batman movie I've seen, it's like that would never happen in real life. This one, I felt like it could. And I think he was just an incredibly badass Batman, starting with the first time we ever saw him. Remember that clip? It was amazing. I'm vengeance. Now, while some of you will disagree with me of his portrayal as Batman, I'm sold on it. I can't wait for the next movie. With that being said, I was really excited to get the statue, not just because of that, but it looked amazing. And as a spoiler, there's a few issues, but it did not disappoint. So I'm doing this big setup upstairs of all the on-screen Batmans for the most part. If you recall, I own Batfleck from the Justice, uh, the Snyder Cut Justice League. I also own Val Kilmer right here. Christian Bale, this one's by Queen Studios, where the other two were Prime One. And then I have a few other life-size busts, including this, Batfleck. And then, of course, Keaton. And I have a custom one-third scale Keaton coming, so I'm going to have... Coming. So I'm going to have five different Batmans all up there. If you want to see what they look like displayed together, check out the Extreme Channel social media. Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. The link for those is in the description below. But I'm going to tell you right now, he's my favorite of all four that I have. And I think it's going to be tough to beat him. And it has nothing to do with the movie. They did an amazing job. They did an amazing job with likeness. They did an amazing job with switch outs. A few design issues, very small, but we're going to talk about those. A crazy, crazy cool base. So let's kick off the review, starting with concept, as we normally do. Now, what I like about most of these, I think all of them actually, they're in a museum style and they kind of go together. And most of the bases are kind of conceptual. This is no exception. This has tons of stuff going on with it. So first of all, you see some ode to the Riddler, the main adversary in the movie. And then it looks like a mix between the Batmobile and the Batcave. And that's indicative of things on the front that we're going to look at some side steps, and then on the back, you have kind of the back of the bat, uh, mobile thruster. And again, a very realistic, with a nameplate. I hate nameplates, but they put it at the back, so I'm okay with that. So very cool base, doesn't take up a lot of room, which I like as well, and he's in a museum style stance in his bat outfit. That was another thing I liked. His bat outfit wasn't over the top. You know, even when we saw that initial scene and you saw his shoes, they were just like army boots. That's why, to me, that it was such a realistic Batman. But he has tons of armor, tons of padding, and then, of course, tons of weapons and other gear with this bat belt, gauntlets on his arm, and then the plating up top. And there's some really, really cool design features we're going to look at. It's a mixed media, a faux pas leather cape falling in the back, which is nice because it doesn't take up much room. And fantastic expressions. Not only on the cowed portrait, but the uncowed portrait, which we're going to look at. Very serious, very sad, just like he was in the movie. So I love it. I think it's a 4 out of 5. I think the base really elevates it to the next level. 5 out of 5, to get that high, it would have had to have been something really elaborate. Because museum style is a little boring, but at least it matches all the other Batmans. Design. They did some really, really cool stuff, as I said, including a ton of neat switch outs. 
Really just one issue, and we'll talk about after the unboxing and assembly. One box, very nice for box space, and it's Blitzway. So Blitzway always does extra packaging, as you can see right here. Our box was nice as well, scenes from the movie and the statue. It had a lot of brochures, so this was some like caution stuff. They had the instructions, they had a little COA, all that's going back in the box. And here is the uh, styrofoam with straps, two layers. First layer had Batman and a lot of the parts. You can see all the switch outs. Second was mostly the base. <laughs> I do like he doesn't take up much space, so the widest part is about 18 inches, and in theory, if you wanted to, you could remove these side steps. The deepest part, 15 inches, which I might have to remove those. I hope I don't, at least temporarily. And he's 31 inches tall, so it is a good height for a one-third scale statue. Tons of switch outs. Let's look at those, starting with, it has a light-up feature in the base, four AAA batteries. Here's a picture of it not turned on, and then here are some pictures of it turned on. Probably won't use it. The nice thing is it's batteries and it's easy to turn on the buttons on the top of the base. His left arm, you have two different options. They're both hanging down. One is a fist. I put that right back in the box, although it does fit the statue well. And then you have a grappling hook. Now, not all these features are on every single statue. This is the bonus edition we'll talk about later. The right hand, lots of different options. First, one where he's permanently holding a battering. And this battering actually moves a little bit. You can see that right there, it folds over. Then you can see this gun he has in the pouch. Well, you could actually remove the gun and put it in one of the hands so he's actually holding the gun. I'd use a heat dryer to get it in there and that's actually what they recommended. Or a fist, which of course is going back in the box for me. And then there's one where he's about to draw the gun. Now there's something else you can do with this we're gonna come back to in a second. What you can do is see on his chest plate, the bat symbol right here, this actually comes off. It comes out and turns into a battering. How freaking cool is that? This is where I, I really feel it's kind of like a doll. So you could put that in the hand I was just referencing. And then he has a pouch right here with some grenades. And I don't remember from the movie if this is specific. And this is my problem. These pouches actually won't close. So kind of annoying. I'd use a heat gun on these as well just to get them in. They should have put magnets in here instead of like a key in a hole that it tries to lock into, but it just doesn't stay. So I'll have to mess with that more. And of course you have two portraits. The cowed portrait or the mass portrait, as you can see right here, looks absolutely amazing in my opinion. And then you have the unmasked portrait. And you know what's interesting? As I'm looking at this in the camera right now, the likeness from farther away doesn't look as good. Up close, it's phenomenal though. So I think they missed out on two things. One was the pouches I told you about. Two, they should have had an extra display stand for the head. I think both portraits are fantastic and should be able to be displayed like a lot of the other Batmans I have. So design is a four out of five in my opinion. I think they did a really nice job and they're really catering to collectors with a lot of cool stuff. Paint and sculpt, let's dive into that. In short, it's awesome. Take a look. Let's start with the portraits. I think the cowled or mass portrait has better likeness than the other one. Like I think this is probably 100%. I mean, this is just like he looked in the movie. I love the texture and design of the cowl. Even the ears are slightly pointed a little bit. Great skin tone and again, a very serious ex expression. So the eyes have to be decals because there's no way that was painted, but they don't look like decals. So that is fantastically done. 
Compared to the other portraits, so first of all, let's look at the hair. They did an amazing job with the hair. It's semi-pliable. All those individual strands really look like Pattinson's hair. I wish my hair looked like this. I'm glad they didn't do too black around the eyes. You know, it's funny, a lot of the unmasked Batman is they have no black around the eyes, yet they have to have black around the eyes when they put the mask on. So again, the complexion is fantastic. You see everything from a mole to almost a five o'clock shadow starting. I think the likeness on this is pretty damn good. It's not perfect. There's some other ones we'll talk about that are a little bit better, but I really like that. All my Batmans are displayed with the cow on, so I will definitely do that. But I, like I said, I wish they, they had a different uh, portrait. The uh, bat suit is fantastic. Like, look at the wear and the layering. This is fully sculpted, yet it looks real with all the stitching, a few of the folds where it's bunched together, and the utility belt. Like, look at that clasp right there. It looks real. And while there is a lot of dark colors on here, it varies up pretty nicely, actually. Normally, I would have criticized them for using a darker base. The cape is a uh, faux leather, I think. It's fake leather, but it still looks fine. But yeah, really nice job with the outfit. Really impressive. Base looks good as well. So I said, it's kind of this cross. There's some, you know, bat symbols, some circuitry. Uh, like this is in the bat cave, almost some diamond plated uh, floors there. And again, those can come off. Then you have the bat symbol on the front. A few hints to the Riddler. No more lies, truth over here. Just a great conceptual base. I don't like this duct tape look. But again, kind of the ode to the uh, Riddler. There is the engine the exhaust on the engine. Yeah, so overall, I'm really impressed with both the paint and the sculpt. And as you look up, like I said, there's, it's dark. I have some bright lights on it. It's actually coming out brighter in the uh, video than it is in real life. Just damn impressive overall, if you ask me. I am a fan for sure. Recently, J&D Studios did a uh, Pattinson Batman 2. I think their likeness is a little bit better, and it is silicone, so it's like twice the price. But uh, it's still fantastic here. So I give the sculpt a 4 out of 5 overall, almost a 5 out of 5, really impressive. Paint, also a 4 out of 5. I just don't like some of that uh, tape and stuff they use on the bottom. Uh, other than that, it's really, really good. Now, this is where you ask, is it worth it? We've really seen a hike on prices lately, and this is no exception. So $1,600, they made 840 of these. 800 are the special editions. So they have the grappling gun, and you can hold this other gun. That's the difference between the special edition or the bonus deluxe or whatever you want to call it, and the regular. So they made 40 of the regular, 800 of these at $1,600 each. When I started collecting, statues like this were about $7.99, so they've truly doubled in price. And with so many Batman statues, you know, I have comic Batman statues as well. I, this is still one of my favorites. I own it right here, this custom one-third scale. I think it's a shitty value, honestly. I think it's two out of five. I think if I ever wanted to sell him, uh, I don't think everyone's as passionate about him as I am. You know, people really like Keaton, people really like Batfleck, people really like Bale. So I think he's way overpriced, in my opinion. Does he have the X Factor? Is he 5 out of 5? Like I said, he's my favorite statue of all the Batman uh, on-screen statues. Not only because the base and the switch outs, but the likeness is spot on. Doesn't make him a 5 out of 5. He's 4 out of 5 overall. Very cool piece. I'm a huge fan. I really like this. What do you guys think? Did you like the movie? Do you think he's the best Batman? If not, support your reasons in the comments below. Because that comment could win you a statue. As we try to grow this channel, we like to reward you guys for watching and subscribing. So because of that, every 5,000 milestone when it comes to subscribers, we give away a couple thousand dollars worth of statues. We've actually given away over 20 statues. To win one is easy. First, you gotta be subscribed to the channel. You'll get bell notifications when videos drop. Each video that drops, you wanna make a comment on those videos. We pick a random video, we give away statues. Based on a comment, you can say whatever you want. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win.
All right, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm filming this on Super Bowl Sunday, so I am about to go watch Go Niners. I hope you uh, were cheering for the Niners too. If you're cheering for the Chiefs, I hate you. That's not true. I just hope you die. Take care, except for the people who are cheering for the Chiefs.